So let me just sum up some of those, the, the, the research, and I've looked at a lot of the research and I've written some, several books on this topic of school choice and charter schools. And I've, so broadly speaking, I'm familiar with the research across multiple states, not only the ones where I was the, the state evaluator. But in terms of empowering local uh, actors and communities, I think initially the charter schools uh, did pursue this. We saw charter schools uh, being started by local community groups, uh, educators, uh, you know, grandmothers, local, local actors. Um, writing an application for a charter is a challenging thing. They usually are, in some states, 350 to 500 page applications. Uh, for a charter, so it's challenging to do it. But we saw that in the 90s, most charters were what we call the independent or mom and, mom and pops. Um, and what we saw around 2000 or 2002, there was a shift in the charter school sector where the number of uh, uh, people with those, those that skill set who could start a school on their own, they were dwindling. But also there was, it was challenging to, to operate charter schools as people were learning. So at that time, we saw the for-profit companies coming in. Uh, Edison Schools Incorporated was the big one back then. Uh, they, were the, they were kind of the savior of the charter schools because they could create lots of schools. They, they had the machinery so they could generate all these applications and open schools. Edison, you know, they had some scandals, some, some testing issues where they weren't, they had a lot of financial problems too because it was publicly traded. Their stocks dropped from $36 a share down to uh, less than 50 cents a share by 2002. So Edison fell out of favor. At this time, we saw the philanthropic sector focusing on what they call the nonprofit education management organizations. They're private companies or organizations, um, but they received philanthropic funds. Uh, so they, they went and they also tried to, to scale up the charter school reform. And since about you know, since around 2002, most charter schools that we see opening today are not independent charter schools. They are schools that are operated and the decisions about them are taken at the corporate headquarters. And in one case, the corporate headquarters is overseas. In many cases, uh, those corporate he headquarters are across the state or across the country. But coming back to that goal, charter schools were going to be, uh, a, you know, the idea was to, you know, empower local actors. What we see today is a very different picture with most charter schools being opened by these private companies. And, and then the private company in turn then finding a list of parents or others, they get, get a list and they hand over the list to the authorizer and say, would you make them the public board? And then the public board is public. And then in no time they're given two contracts to sign. One is a management contract giving the school over to the private company to operate. And the other one is usually the lease agreement, which is, as I've shown in recent researches, leading to a lot of public stripping of, uh, stripping of public assets uh, with these companies and their private interest motives. So I'm not really happy about what's happening today because I don't see as many mom and pops. I don't see the local actors that I see today. You know, the concern in the past was charters, you know, district schools were hard to change and they were too bureaucratic and that, uh, you know, they needed to be flexible for the local, you know, sometimes, you know, a district is maybe only 12, hour, 12 miles away, but you know that distance between the school and the district office was seen to be too far, you know, for taking decisions. Charter schools, you know, would be different. They would be locally run, have their own board. But of course, now we see decisions in charter schools being taken from California, from Florida, from Sweden, uh, in one case. So Another thing was uh, enhanced uh, opportunities for parental involvement. In that case, we have uh, seen most of the research shows that parents that choose charter schools, parents that stay in charter schools are satisfied. Uh, we haven't been able in the research to look and survey uh, families that have left. Uh, obviously, some families that leave are going to be dissatisfied, but the surveys of those who do persist are, are positive. And, and generally, the schools, our parents are more engaged in these schools. They volunteer more. Uh, in the charter school. So it has, in created, it has in fact created opportunities for parental involvement that weren't seen at the same scale in traditional public schools. 